Hey guys, once again, Pharrell Williams here, Artist Talk. I'm sitting here with the incredible Usher Raymond, good friend of mine, talent extraordinaire, jack of many trades. Bobby Brown, are you the Michael Jackson? That's what I want to do. They were like, yeah, sure, kid, whatever. I said, no, 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 that's what I'm going to do. Now, at a young age, you're thinking like this. Yeah, if I would have come out as a kid artist, I probably would have ended up kind of lost in the kid thing. But he put me with Puff in a time when you know, Puff was hot. You blew him away. Blew him away, instantly. There were many people who passed up on Justin. Well, a great love song is a great love song. They ain't listening to love songs, though, dog. I mean, and that's why it's so important for us to continue to keep R&B ballads alive. Hey. Oops. Usher became a household name when he was just 14 years old. Over the past 19 years, he has sold over 65 million albums worldwide. In addition to his reputation as one of the time's greatest performers, he is also an accomplished producer and mentor to young artists. Welcome to Artist Talk. Well, yeah. Well, now they get a chance to see what we talk about. That's right. Yeah. So, you were singing in the church choir at nine, and you started professionally by the time you were 11. Did you feel like you had enough time and experience to be a singer before it all, it all became a job? Well, I mean, if you go through um, history, I think that the church is kind of significant to everybody's start. Um, I mean, in some way, rather, it's just the soulful essence of it and the runs that we used to enjoy listening to, from, you know, Clark Sisters or, you know, BB and CC Winan or Daryl Coley or whatever it may be, you know what I mean, in, in earlier times. My mother, um, you know, she was really the, the influence more than anybody because she sang in the choir. So um, while I'm listening to quote unquote secular music and just enjoying it, I'm like, okay, well I need an outlet because I like singing, you know, and dancing and singing is a part of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. If we're not on a, you know, a piece of linoleum or, you know, on a street corner battling each other running, <laughs> you know what I mean? That there really was no outlet. I start telling people, like I'm gonna be somebody. I'm like, what? What do you mean? I'm going to be a star one day. You see what that man's doing on television? Was Bobby Brown or either Michael Jackson? That's what I want to do. They were like, yeah, sure, kid, whatever. I said, no, 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 no. That's what I'm going to do. So church was a place where you were able to kind of, you know, really get off and enjoy. And it was almost like a, a, a culture in a, in a way. So that kind of got me accustomed to being in front of at least an audience in a way. Mm -hmm. um, after that, you know, I wanted to enter talent shows. So, who really discovered you? Was it Jermaine Dupree, L.A. Reid, or Star Search? My mother discovered me, dude. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, she was the first person to notice my talent, and Miss Janetta. It was Janetta Patton, it was J. Patton. So after she recognized my talent, any outlet that was possible, she gave it to me. So there was this group in, in Chattanooga, Tennessee that I was a part of, and it gave me an opportunity to do a record for the first time and actually uh, go state to state and just kind of you know do something with, with teenagers, right? It wasn't until I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, that I applied for Star Search, one, well, I was, I was uh, selected and then went to do it, but also, I was still in talent shows in Atlanta until I was recognized by Bryant Reed. I mean, I was making noise, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's our shit, baby. You yeah. Know what I'm Even <laughs> I you know? love it, man. No, nah, but, you know. Showtime. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And, um, you know, I was, I, I, was, I was destined, you know what I mean, for something. I wanted, I wanted to make it. And I knew that Atlanta was the place to make it happen. Ellie Reed and Babyface had just started their label. You know, Boys to Men's End of the Road was like the biggest record of life at the time, and that was my hit record to sing. That's when I met Brian Reed. Introduced me to LA, brought me into his office, had me sing for a couple of his employees, and on the spot wanted to sign me. I blew him away. You blew him away? Blew him away, instantly. I'm singing to him, and I'm, I'm into my thing, and I got my eyes closed, and I'm, we belong together, and you know that. I'm singing this thing, and he's like. That's what you sang? Yeah. I that's sang the first Boys, song you sang? That's the first song I sang to him. Okay, so let, like, let's make sure everyone knows what song it is. End of the Road, Boys to Men is what I sang for L.A. Reid. And you were how old? I was 13 years old. Okay. 13 years old. Okay. And he stopped me and said, wait a minute. 
would you be comfortable if I bring some people in here? I said, well, you bring whoever you want in here. So he brought a few of his uh, female uh, employees in and he set them up and I'm realizing, oh, he, think I'm a, he thinks I'm afraid of women. All right, cool, okay. let me get it. So he put the record back on and I instantly go over and I'm like connecting with the girls and I go down on one knee and I'm serenading the woman and they're like, you know, all giggling and stuff. So he realized, oh wow, he gets performance. By right. the way, LA's never seen me perform, doesn't know what I do. It's the and first time him. seeing you. I want him right there, that was it. Wow. Okay, so now, 1994, can you get with it? <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a derailment. I lost my voice. So, I, you know, the one disadvantage in having young artists is they're gonna go through some tumultuous things that they don't have any control over. Right. One, my voice, I'm changing. changing, so yeah. So naturally, I'm, I'm, I'm in a higher register, I'm like an alto, now. I'm but that like song a, was so dope. What happened was, after I was signed, um, LA really wanted me to get what he called Flavor Camp. He wanted to send me to Flavor Camp. So he you know, introduces uh, Puffy to the scene. The world now knows who Puffy is. And I met Puff and he said, all right, cool. I'm gonna have him come and stay with you in New York. You guys work on an album, you know? And then I ended up crossing, you know, Devante and also Timbaland and Biggie and Craig Mack and you know all, all of them in that time. Okay, yeah. so then we're gonna speed up to three years later, I 1997. Told. Yeah, your first big hit. First big hit. How did that feel? I mean, it felt good to finally you know have a hit record. I'm like, man, I'm th I'm thankful that L.A. Reid didn't have a change of heart, and he really was dedicated to the world being able to see the artist that I was. He just knew that there was always a little something missing, whether it was a hit record or really the ability to make that connection. If I would have come out as a kid artist, I probably would have ended up kind of lost in the kid thing and then had to figure out a way to make that transition. But he put me with Puff in a time when, you know, Puff was hot and Puff didn't have a solo young artist. So, you know, he introduced me to an older demographic, but also kids could listen to it as well. Now, can you get with it? I don't know how good that messaging was, but, I think it definitely opened up the conversation for yeah, man. the sex symbol that, you know what I'm saying, they wanted me to eventually, you know, evolve into. Yeah, okay, but let's 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 talk about it, right? Like a lot of times parents talk about like what's appropriate for kids, but the kids like the grown-up music. Well, then let's just go back to the fact that I guess the older generation has always been inspiration for the youth. You know, if you look at you know, Michael, and then Smokey Robinson being an influence for him, and then us being able to hear him cover, you know, Smokey Robinson, you know, written records, mm -hmm. and you be able to hear, like, such incredible potential for a voice. Well, the same thing happens in this time. It's just, I think maybe the focus is no longer on vocal ability, artist development, it's on sensationalism. And I think that now, kind of creating a movement, you know, a move, a dance, something that is, like, fearless, and you know, unapologetic. That is what people now flock towards. And unfortunately, it does trickle down to kids, but hey, they're gonna hear it one way or another. That's right. It's just, uh, I mean, you, you just, it, what it means is that we as parents just have to monitor what we allow our kids to be, you know, privy to. Well, you know, a great love song is a great love song. They ain't listening to love songs though, dog. No. They trying to see that shit drop, pop, drop and drop it. You know what I'm saying? They wanna, they wanna, they want to be a part of the movement, you right. know what I'm saying? Like they yeah. look at TV and they look at their friends in school, you know, I mean, and that's why it's so important for us to continue to keep, you know, soulful music, R&B ballads alive. Yes. If it dies, R&B music really does die. So it's a responsibility, man. It's, a, it's one that I don't mind, you know, taking on my back. At some point, it's, it's, it's my opinion that you're going to do a book, right? And I feel like it's gonna be about love. Okay. Because you have a lot of experience yeah. with love. How do you define love? Love is sacrifice. Love is pain. Love is patience. Love is sharing. Love is honesty. Love is integral. Love is unwavering. It's all those things. So, I mean, when I come up with all those kind of mantras or words, at least, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about, you know, it could be philanthropic. It could be 
you know, integrity of art. It could be music. It could be a child. It could be a loved one. It could be your family. It could be your significant other. Love can be all those things, man. But I think that more than anything, it is patience. Now, you've had like a lot of people, a lot of good people around you. What's the- Very what's, fortunate, yeah. what's, what's the best advice you feel like you've gotten? Man, let go, enjoy, have fun, man, you know? You know, what do you do after you've considerably, you know, done enough, you know? Some people would say a Grammy is enough. Some people would say traveling around the world one time is enough. Some people that would say that a hit record on an album released would be enough. Some people would say one album would be enough. You know, I think at this point, having evolved the way that I have and been, you know, the places I've been and had the experiences that I've had, like, just enjoy it now and, and, and be free in it, you know, and, you know, be artistic, be creative allow you know the world to benefit from you know some of the things that you've seen is there anything you did as an artist that you wish you didn't anything that i and i mean i can tell you like i got it like an encyclopedia because i'm such a perfectionist and you you're very particular and that's that's worked to your advantage you know what i really do feel like we all have um our own crosses to bear you know how could i really learn a lesson if i if i regret it anything that means you probably gonna still go through the same shit over and over again until you get it. All the artists that are watching this right now totally appreciate what you're saying. It's the truth. Yeah, you know and I mean, I'm talking about in any any platform. I mean, art is art is art is art. Yo, man. And we can all appreciate that. Let me tell you something. You really understand it when you begin to study the life trending topic in music. Rather it's social rights, Rather it's love, rather it's pain, rather it's divorce, hear my dear. Albums like that really vulnerable. Albums like that for Marvin Gaye, if you don't know who I'm talking about. You know, they really give credence to the fact that you really just gotta live in the moment, let go and just let it, let it happen. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know what, you can only be where you are when you're there. And then when you move on, you're in another place. It's all about evolving. You know, I came up with this phrase, evolve or evaporate. It really does apply to life. I don't know if everybody can get it, because some people do live in a fearful place, mm -hmm. a fearful place of what people may think or what people will assume or what they will feel. Mm -hmm. You can't give a shit about none of that. You just gotta be creative and, and live in it because fear is not gonna create anything new. <laughs> you let go or it's okay to fall. Yeah, let go or let go. Okay. It may seem to everyone that's watching this right now that you've just answered my next question, but I know you very well, and you haven't answered this next question, which is, what's the secret to your success? Like, what, what are you doing that makes us care so much about you? What's the secret to Usher? It's that feeling, man. It's that irreplaceable feeling of real music and entertainment. I feel very fortunate because I've had a lot of people around to help build what it is. But to be able to perform a record, to be able to sell a record through performance, dance, vocally, and the passion of what it is, I think that that's what continues to keep people connected to who I am as an artist. And that R&B music allows you to feel, or my music, I, I don't know if it's R&B or if it's just music, period. Mm -hmm. The music that I create and that I've lived through and the experiences that I've been able to, you know, borrow from mm -hmm. to create inspiration for our songs that we create together. Mm -hmm. You know, they're real experiences that people can feel. That, that's an irreplaceable feeling and, and soulful music. Something you can feel. Yeah, something that you can feel. Mm -hmm. Would you say that as great of a singer as you are, great of a dancer as you are, you know, tap, everything, is that your real talent? Like the magnetism that you have? It is a magnetic force that pulls people in. Okay, that that's comes what I from, wanna hear. That comes from the pure source of love for music. So is that what we're showing up for? We keep showing up to, to watch. No, 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 it's, it's the voice. 
I really do think that it's my voice. My voice is what makes me unique and different from each and every person, you know? Uh, dancing is great, but eventually the greatest dance move can be recreated or something else, but you can't recreate this voice. Okay. And the culture of it, you know, listening to and studying such incredible artists before me is really what created Which is who true. I am. And, and that's what I think I'll be remembered for. Having won seven Grammys, that pretty much says it. But I don't even know if people know that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, listen, I remember vividly. You had a white suit on. We were both doing a red carpet. You walked over before you even said, what's up? You said, yeah, we just won for you. You don't have to call. All right, what's up, man? It's cool. Speak to you later. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember it. I got it on tape. I just watched it the other day. That's cr Really? Yeah. Wow. That's a... That's a it was crazy. crazy. He was like, wait a minute, we won already? I'm like, yeah, we won. Set the record straight. Did you discover Justin Bieber? What do you mean you set it straight? That's, has there ever been a conversation or question whether it, it's real or not? No, but you know, it just, it gets this good reaction. Okay, cool. Yeah. No, um, of course, we're all clear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we all know. Um, I mean, and actively continuing to be supportive, you yeah. know, as a mentor and also a creator. Uh, along with Scooter. Scooter's his manager mm -hmm. and has always been. Scooter um, Braun. Scooter Braun mm -hmm. uh, is Justin Bieber's manager and always uh, been there. But, um, you know, I I'll say this. Success has a million fathers and failure is an orphan. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's a ton of people who in part have, um, uh, I guess, at least a hand in and being a part of discovering him because his his impression was made about a million plus before anybody had kind of brought him to a label. Now the interesting part is this. There were many people who passed up on Justin, which I will call no names because right. that's not why we're here. Right, right. But I think he came at a time when people were very doubtful that one, he or an artist like him would be relevant outside of a factory like Disney or Nickelodeon or something like that. Yeah. So it was a bit of a risk and it took the credibility and the guts uh, and association of somebody like myself uh, to really help push the ball along and really get you know, the right people behind it mm -hmm. and the right support staff to continue to help cultivate and build who Justin Bieber is today. Well, look, you've done really well with Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. um, let me introduce you to someone I'm excited about. This is Leah LaBelle. What's up? So, welcome. Thank you. How are you finding being an artist? You appreciate every moment, and I think this journey has been a journey for sure. You know, a lot of years and a lot of hard work and a lot of dreams and sleepless nights and cries and tears and laughs and love and, yeah, yeah, you know, it's yeah, all those yeah. things. Talk and then shit. you come to it and you're thrown into it. I always say, like, it doesn't happen overnight, but when it happens, it happens overnight. You know, like proven it took me so many years to finally get to where I am for you to find me. And I'm really happy with what I'm getting ready to give the world because I think it's different. Like we've done some things that nobody has touched yet or, you know, may have been scared to do. But of course, this man is never scared to do anything. And that's one of the reasons why he's been so successful. And even you guys, you did, um, and you don't have to call, you guys took one of those risks and did that a double bridge that like nobody had done before. When do you feel like it's the right time to take a risk like that? It really produces intuition. Mm. You know, what feels right. And for me, you know, I allow myself to be led by his vision. Mm -hmm. And I just think it just felt so good that why not bring it back? Oh, hey. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, produces intuition. Right. Uh, you know, spot on. You, uh, in every way, you just have to 
Is that a naked woman that just came through? This? Yeah, I love that. This is very great. That um, was nice. She, she was nice, right? So, no, no. Producer's intuition for the third time. <laughs> That's when you take over. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just like, mm. Well, you know, um, the intuition is it's not just with the producer, but it's also with the artist. Right. You know, it's, it's everyone in the room. It's all of us sharing our intuition. I'll be it's right like, back. Yeah. Whew. All right. Thanks, P. Appreciate that, dog. <laughs> Needed that. <laughs> but it's seriously, intuition is something that we share in the studio, and that's where we get our magic from. How do you feel about what you've been working on? I mean, I feel great. I feel I, like I've been pushed and I've been challenged um, mm -hmm. and done things that I may not have thought that I could have or would have thought on my own, and that's the beauty of working with Pharrell and JD, you know, Jermaine Dupree is also the other half of my project, so both of them have so much to offer and their own in their own ways and have challenged me. Yeah. It's it's pretty special. You work until something happens. Absolutely. Yeah. Stay yeah. focused on the goal, which is just work. Yeah. And uh, you know, you work your hardest, you put your best foot forward and uh, take small wins. Mm -hmm. You know, because every little one means something greater for a bigger reward in the end mm -hmm. you know uh, the instant gratification of being able to get it overnight ain't the shit that you want mm -hmm. because it'll be over right. overnight yeah. so you got to do the work mm -hmm. it's subjects like that that I just love to explore in every episode and this has been yet another great episode of artist talk so thank you guys so much thank you. invite me back <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> hey, Pharrell Williams here, host of Artist Talk. Uh, make sure you don't, you know, miss any of the episodes coming in 2013. I got like all the like super genius, monsterly minded artists, sculptors, architects. Just don't miss it. It's super cool. Just make sure you subscribe here on the button. This is not like, I'm not really good at this because I'm not, you know. It's not even like really a show at the end of the day. It's like it's a conversation that you should participate in. Don't miss it, all right? 2013, the coolest episodes, Artist Talk. And you know, I'm kind of like the host. Right? Pharrell Williams here. Hi, I'm Joy Bryant. I'm Eric Repair. I'm Tom Colicchio. I'm Dr. Frank Lipman. The host of On the Table. The host of Across the Board. Host of Artist Talk. Host of Hooked Up. Host of the show, Be Well Week, Be Well Weekend on the Reserve Channel. It's only on Reserve. Did you know that you can follow my show on social media sites like Facebook? Follow us on Twitter. If you're a fan of my show, hit the like button. All of the above. Share me with your friends. Treat yourself. You know, check out a new episode of my show, Hooked Up. And if you want to leave comments, feedback, ideas, whatever, love to hear from you. Leave a comment. And if you don't want to miss the show, be sure to subscribe. The one that's like down here, or is it here? Uh, somewhere down here. Thanks for watching the Reserve channel. Only on YouTube. Share me, please. Throw caution to the wind and ask yourself what rules. <laughs>